This video is brought to you by Tab for a Cause. Install the extension in your browser and raise money for Ukraine just by opening tabs. The link is down below. As some of you probably already know, the crypto markets have been having a torrid time for the past few weeks. Cryptocurrencies across the board, including Bitcoin, Ethereum and Tether, have all crashed and the drop doesn't seem to be slowing down. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the ongoing crypto crash and how it might even force El Salvador into default. So let's start with the crypto crash itself. As central banks around the world raise interest rates to cool off their national economies, stock markets have been plummeting. The Nasdaq is down 28% from its January high and the S&P is down 18% in the same time. This sort of makes sense. As central banks raise rates, trade and demand dry up, and this reduces the revenues of publicly traded companies. What's been more surprising, however, is the corresponding drop in crypto markets, where things have been far worse. Just looking at the big cryptocurrencies, drops in excess of 50% aren't uncommon. Bitcoin, for example, is currently trading at about $30,000, and Ethereum is trading at about $2,100, both down about 50% in the last six months. And Tether, which is always supposed to be a stable coin that always trades at $1, fell to $0.95 cent on Thursday, prompting its chief technology officer to tweet reassurances to investors that it was capable of honouring withdrawals at par. Smaller cryptocurrencies have fared even worse. Cardano and Solana are both down 80% from this September and November highs respectively. Terra Luna, which was once among the top 10 most valuable cryptocurrencies, lost 98% of its value in just 24 hours. You get the picture. The crypto market is crashing, and crashing hard. Now, this is probably happening because while cryptocurrencies aren't really directly affected by changes in interest rates, they are affected by changes in market confidence. Crypto assets, like many other assets, are clearly speculative. In other words, lots of people buy crypto assets just hoping they'll go up in value and they could sell them later without any regard to the intrinsic value. This means that when a sell-off begins, it triggers a feedback loop. Speculative investors who only wanted the crypto assets for its future value sell off to minimise their losses, bringing the price down further and causing even more people to sell off. So what triggered the sell-off this time? Well, it probably began in reaction to the collapse of the stock market. Traders saw the value of their portfolios declining and decided to sell their cryptos. Whatever the original cause, the feedback loop was started and cryptos have been collapsing. The idea that cryptos are a sort of digital gold or a hedge against inflation now look frankly risible, and people across the internet have lost terrifying amounts of money. The Terra Luna subreddit pinned national helpline numbers after multiple posts from users considering suicide. However, the biggest loser in this crypto crash might be Nayib Bukele. For those of you who don't know him, Bukele is the Twitter-addicted president of El Salvador. In 2015, Bukele was elected mayor of San Salvador, the capital of the largest city in El Salvador. He was remarkably popular with San Salvadorians, largely because he successfully reduced crime in the city. In his first year in office, the murder rate saw a fall of 50%, which Bukele attributed to his tough anti-crime policies, including an increased police and military presence on the streets, and tighter security in jails. Although it's worth noting that there were reports that Bukele had made an informal deal with the gangs. Bukele also won over voters with projects to revitalise poor neighbourhoods, progressive stances on social issues such as gay marriage, and shrewd use of social media. He even donated his salary to provide scholarship for poor students. Throughout his mayoralty, Bukele enjoyed approval ratings of above 70% and soon became the most popular politician in the country. Bukele used his mayorship as a launchpad to the presidency, winning the 2019 presidential election by a landslide with 53% of the vote, well ahead of both of the mainstream candidates. Once in power, Bukele turned into a bit of an autocrat, albeit an effective one. Allegedly, thanks to some dodgy deals between Bukele's government and the gangs, gang warfare has subsided and the murder rate has fallen by 60%. But alongside reducing the crime rate, Bukele's other big political aspiration was about turning El Salvador into a crypto paradise. 
On September the 7th of last year, Bukele passed a law recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender, requiring businesses to accept the cryptocurrency for goods and services. And a few months later, he announced a $1 billion Bitcoin bond issuance to fund a low-tax Bitcoin city next to Colchagua Volcano. Since September, Bukele has bought some 2,301 bitcoins with El Salvadorian taxpayer money. The most recent purchase coming on Monday the 9th of May, when he bought 500 coins at an average price of $30,744. We did the maths and figured out that the average price Bukele paid for his bitcoins was about $43,900 per bitcoin. At the time of writing, Bitcoin is trading at about $30,000, which means Bukele has lost around $14,000 per Bitcoin, or about $32 million total. Now, we should say that $32 million isn't going to bankrupt an entire country. Sure, El Salvador is a tiny country of less than 7 million people, and a GDP per capita of less than $4,000. But it's already got a national debt of about $23 billion. So another $23 million is hardly going to take it over the edge. However, Bukele's failing Bitcoin strategy has also hurt El Salvador's finances in other ways. His reckless buy-the-dip attitude has spooked investors, pushing El Salvador's borrowing costs sky high. For context, El Salvador's $800 million bond due next January is now trading at 76 cents on the dollar, implying an annual yield of over 50%. And in early May, Moody's downgraded El Salvador's credit rating to CAA3 with negative outlook, which is one rating away from, quote, likely or very near default. For those of you who don't know much about bond yields, that's really not good. Now, Bukele was planning on paying off this $800 million bond due in January by issuing a new so-called Bitcoin bond worth $1 trillion. Again, the crypto cash has put a spanner in the works here because, well, who wants a Bitcoin bond when Bitcoin is crashing? Bloomberg recently reported that there's currently zero demand for it, although we should say that Bukele's finance minister claims it's 50% oversubscribed. Anyway, if Bukele can't find any buyers for his Bitcoin bond, then default on that $800 million during January looks likely. Nonetheless, Bukele looks unlikely to change course. He's continued to buy the dip and even revealed a model of Bitcoin City in the last few days, which, by the way, looks like this. Bukele will be encouraged by his sky-high approval ratings. While El Salvadorians aren't so keen on his Bitcoin plans, vast majorities approve of his crime and Covid policies, and his own approval rating is still well above 80%, one of the highest in the world. While this might be good news for Bukele, the lack of political resistance to his harebrained Bitcoin schemes might end up being bad news for ordinary El Salvadorians. It's easy to find everything around the world a little overwhelming right now, but there is one small thing you can do to help. You can donate money to causes that you care about without spending a penny. Yep, really. That's because Tab for a Cause is the sponsor of today's video, and they allow you to donate money just by using your browser. They support charities like Save the Children, who have been working to provide life-saving interventions in Ukraine since 2014, working to provide the most basic needs to vulnerable families, as well as providing psychological support and increasing awareness of the hazards of war. So, what can you do to help? Well, if you head to tabforacause.org forward slash Ukraine, you can add an extension to your browser which raises money to help the people of Ukraine every time you open a new tab. Yeah, it really is that simple. And you can even track the impact you've made personally. And you don't need to worry. They're not doing anything scary. They're just putting a couple of ads in the corner of your new tab page. And the money raised from advertisers goes straight towards the cause. Smart, right? Well, as I said, you can easily support the people of Ukraine and help contribute to the $1.3 million raised so far by heading to tabforacause.org forward slash Ukraine. Thanks for your support.